this almost by doing impressive things, not to steal money or something. The actual design of the blue box involves circuits. I was personally motivated. Everything I ever designed, I tried to make the best anyone could in the world. So of course I tried to, in college, I tried to make my blue box the best design anyone could think of. Which chips I used, how I pulled tricks to get three things at once to happen out of one part, when two is supposedly the maximum an expert can do. I did all these amazing tricks and I carried those design styles over into my later video games, terminals to talk to the ARPANET, the early internet, and the computers that we started Apple Computer with. The exact chips and circuits for basically doing horizontal and vertical timing were the ones that chose tones in my blue box. What do you think is the, the opinion of Hewlett Packard's executives nowadays knowing that they lost the chance to be the first ones to exploit the concept of personal computing? Right, I worked at Hewlett Packard without a college degree they knew me as a good designer, a good engineer. So I was designing the early handheld scientific calculators. The greatest products, the ones that were like today's iPhones and iPads in the world. I had such a lucky job. And Hewlett Packard, when I developed the first, the first version of my own computer, and Steve Jobs suggested we start a company. I said, oh, anything I design belongs to my company, Hewlett Packard. I wanted them to build this product. And I described what they could build for what price and how it would be made and operate. And they loved the idea, but turned me down. They turned me down five times. But it's a good thing. Hewlett Packard back in those days only made test equipment that engineers used. Things like meters and oscilloscopes and power supplies. They would have built a computer that was very dull to the average person at home. And the home computer revolution wouldn't have started. So it was good that Hewlett Packard didn't do it then. Obviously, um, you, Bill Hewlett once told me, I said I was sorry, I really wanted Hewlett Packard to have it. And Bill Hewlett said, well, you win some, you lose some. I read in your autobiography that you began your entertainment at a very young age with your father. Uh, where do you think lies the success of the first designs of Apple, Apple computers hardware compared to those produced by Altair? Well, in the early days of computers, there were a bunch of kits being sold at prices that an individual could afford. And we started the first homebrew computer club, a club to celebrate these devices. You'd buy a kit of parts, have big face plates with those switches for ones and zeros, buttons you could push to get the ones and zeros into some memory, but really they were just glorified microprocessors. To me, a computer had to do what I was lucky to have done in high school and college. You had to be able to type in a program to solve something or to play a game. And those little computers, like the Altair, the kits that were coming out, only had 256 bytes of memory. That's not even enough to run a computer programming language. Yes, if you bought a bunch of expensive boards of memory, maybe it cost as much as a car. And you bought Bill Gates Basic that cost half as much as a car. And you bought a teletype that cost as much as a car, then you might have a computer that could solve some, actually be used in your business. But really, it was just a little hobby tool. The characteristics of those early computers, starting with the Altair, were the same as one that I had built five years before when I met Steve Jobs. I had designed and built one of those with little switches for ones and zeros and buttons you could push. And I, you never want to go back and do the same thing again. I now saw the formula to build an affordable device based on all the chips that had come down in price. Memory chips, the advent of dynamic memory chips, microprocessors, input-output chips. All these things had come down in price that I saw the formula in my head that it was easy to build a complete computer of my own that would help me with two things in my life. At Hewlett Packard, we all shared a computer. We signed up for time on it. I wanted a computer at my own desk, on my lab bench, that I could type in my programs to do my Hewlett Packard logic simulations, my work. And I also wanted a computer that could play games. 
more than anything else, computer games were so rare, so few people had ever seen a computer or a computer game at that point in time. And there were books out called 101 Games in Basic, and I wanted to be able to do that. Well, it turns out that I couldn't afford anything because I had no money, so I just had to build it all myself from scratch and even write all the software myself. Okay. What did you expect from Apple II when you introduced graphics, and what feedback did you get of users who bought them? I was working on a project at Atari, the game Breakout. And while there, it turns out that Steve Jobs needed some money for this game. And I designed it, and Steve helped me build it up at Atari. So both of us went four days and nights with virtually no sleep at all. <laughs> And your head gets in a very creative state as you're falling asleep or waking up. When you're halfway between sleep and awakeness, your mind goes off in directions it wouldn't normally go in. Sometimes it's called daydreaming. And one of the ideas that popped in my head, well, I saw someday these video games that were all black and white TVs, someday they might be color. I saw something on the Atari factory floor that made me think of that color was going to come, and beautiful. And then an idea popped in my head of a way to generate color with a $1 chip instead of $1,000 like it normally cost. And I tucked that memory away when I finally built it up and it worked. I could type a number into memory on my keyboard. I could put a five into a certain location of memory and a green square would pop up on my TV. And I could type in another number and a yellow square would pop up. I showed Steve Jobs and we both knew we had something very special for the world. That now all of the video games and all of the color graphics and everything you can imagine in cartoon television shows and whatnot were going to be possible on a computer.